I joined Akash in 9th standard. Mm -hmm. So I joined early. I gave Anthony an 8th standard. Pretty much a game changing moment for me. Now I'm competing all across India. I'm Aishwarya and I'm back with Science 101 with a very, very interesting topic for all of you. That is, what is this bioluminescence and what are fireflies and why do these fireflies glow at night? Trust me, today we are going to be exploring deep into the animal kingdom, learning about some interesting animals, learning about what is this bioluminescence in the first place. So what I need all of you to do is to quickly hit the like button for this video. Do not forget to hit that red button, which is that subscribe button on the side. And most importantly, get your friends, share this link with them. Tell them Ashwara Mam has something very interesting for all of us. So you have to watch this session even if you are not part of 6 to 8 channel, but you still have to watch this class because this is going to be amazing. Yes, Rishi is telling me my teacher has explained it. Then Rishi, you are going to be helping me with this, right? So like I tell you, some of the topics, we are aware of it. But, and if, if we are, I always tell you that I welcome the fact that you help me out with it. You tell your friends about what you know, right? Because... We're a small family, right? We're a small family, but a very loving family and we always want the best for each other. Yes, yeah, so many of you are here already. I can see Niyati, Keshav. Yes, Rishita is here. All right. Pratik, Vineet. All right. I would say Shruvangshu. I know you're asking me if you remember. If you can just remind me your name once again. Ankita, Gungun, Ashreya, Prasanna. I can see so many of you are here already. Aradhya is here. Hello. Yes, Ankita, of course, I do remember all of you. Laksh is new. Avika is here. Amazing. Rani is here. So for those of you who are new to the class, welcome to our family. Welcome to the channel. I will tell you to hit that subscribe button. But in case if you're like, should I really subscribe to the channel? Then I'll tell you, you just wait till the end of this video and then you will subscribe no matter what. Yes? Amazing. So, of course, before I get started, I hope my audio, my video and my screen and what I'm writing on the screen is visible to all of you. If it is, please do go ahead and quickly give me a thumbs up on the chat. Yes, Jyoti is here. Shruvang Chu. Okay, all right. So many of you are saying I've subscribed. Amazing. So do not forget to tell your friends also that when they are coming to the channel, they should be subscribing because you know that we have to hit 25,000 subscribers. Because in our 9 to 10 channel, we aimed for 100,000 and we got it. And we are not falling behind. No, we are also going to hit 25 very soon. Yes, and I know that we will do it. So do not forget to hit that subscribe button. And of course, we are going to be starting off with the Anthe preparation. For those of you who do not know what Anthe is, Anthe is the Akash National Talent Hunt exam that is going to be there in November. And of course, it's going to be one of the most coveted exams that are out there, wherein we see that the questions are going to be a little bit of a higher order type. But trust me, in terms of improving your skills, right? Especially competitive exam skills and tomorrow if you want to give JE or NEET. This is, these are going to be your stepping stones, I would say, right? So do not forget to register. We are going to slowly start giving you some questions of Anthe as well so that you also get an understanding of how amazing this exam is going to be, right? So do not forget. Yes, high five to all of you. And now we are going to get started, all right? So we are going to get started with the class. I've taken four to five minutes for everybody to settle down. Yes, and we're gonna get started with the class today, which is on how do fireflies glow at night, right? So how many of you have seen fireflies? Very honestly, you can tell me. No, 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 you are not late. We are just getting started. Yes, Rani, I did call you out. Keshav, I did call you out as well. Yes, I can see so many of you are saying that you've seen it, right? 
Now I'll be very honest. I have never. I did not see a firefly until very recently. And I remember it was a Saturday Sunday, and I was out with my family. And you know, we were in this um, place which is like a little outside Bangalore. And I remember there's a lot of trees and forests. And that is the first time I saw a fire firefly. After so many years, that's the first time that is there, right? So in case if you have not seen it, also it's okay. I'm sure at some point all of you will see it. Okay? Yes, we both see. Yes. So for those of you who have not seen fireflies, right? I'll tell you something. If they are there, it would look something like this. Now, can you tell me what you observe on screen? So today is going to be very observation based because biology is all about observation. So I want you to tell me what do you see on screen? Yes, lot of you have seen it. That's amazing. Light, very good, very good. Yes, good afternoon, Aditya. Good afternoon. Unfortunately, no. It's okay if you have not seen fireflies. Not a problem. But I want you to tell me what you are observing on the screen. You are observing light. Very good. Very good. Light is flying. All right. I can see light dots that are there. Very good. I want you to just tell me what you see on screen. We're going to take it step by step. Yes. So here, if you see, right, there are multiple light dots that are there. And each of this, for those of you who are telling me, ma'am, I am not seen it, and some of you are saying you have, they are all fireflies, right? Yes, flying dots of light, and they are fireflies that we see around. And of course, they we are able to see them like this because normally when we see flies or anything in the dark, we'll not be able to spot it. It'll just maybe maximum we'll hear one sound, and that's also of a bee, right? But of course, you get my point, right? We don't really see a lot of light. But fireflies, for some reason, are glowing. So let's understand more on this as to why these fireflies glow. Yes, very good, very good. I have seen them in phone only. Yes, very good. So now, very quickly, everybody, let's see how a firefly really looks like. Of course, this is a very cute-looking, you know, firefly that we have with us. Yes, but how does a firefly really look like? Now, this is how the firefly looks like. And I have an interesting question for all of you, which I want you to tell me yes or no. Is firefly a fly? Yes or no? Very quickly in the chat. Is a firefly really a fly? Yes? You can tell me whatever you feel. Yes. Of course, ma'am, fire and fly, that means that it's a fly, right? What are you asking? This sounds like a very ridiculous question. Some of you are saying, yes, maybe. Maybe because you know ma'am is asking me this question, it might not be the answer as well. You've caught them also. Interesting. Very good, very good. So I can say a lot of you are saying yes, but I have an interesting fact for all of you. Now fireflies, although we call them as flies, right? They don't fall under the family of like a housefly or something like that. They don't fall in that family, but rather they fall under the family of beetles. Now, beetles are a kind of insects which have very hardened wings, right? So, if you see their wings, they are very hard. Unlike flies, if you see their wings, right? I'm sure all of you would have seen house flies. They'll be very paper thin, and they'll be like they'll be like some pattern that is there. Which is why, if you see, although we call it as a fly, it's technically not a fly, but rather it's a beetle. And as science students, we should know this. Other examples of beetles. The most common example is the rhinoceros beetle, and all of you can go and have Google this. Okay, you can check it on the internet and you can search for rhinoceros beetle. You will see that it will have a long, pointy thing like this. Yes, you've seen fireflies in Dan Daily. Very good, very good. Yes, we find it all over. So interesting thing is, fireflies are found everywhere, right? It's not exclusive to one place on Earth. No, we find it everywhere except in Antarctica. Right, because the temperature is very cold there. Right, they'll not be able to survive. Yes, there are many fireflies in your village. That's amazing, amazing. You've made a lamp out of it, also. Okay, all right. Now, of course, now when we talk about fireflies, I saw a lot of you were telling me, "Ma'am, fireflies will not glow in the day. They'll glow in the dark." Right. So yes, if you see the basal portion of their body, right? So this particular portion, we see that that is what is glowing, right? Yes, and they produce a very loud sound when they are moving around. Yes. So this glow that we are talking about, right? This glow is what we call as luminescence. Yes. 
And if we say bioluminescence, can you tell me what will it be? What do we mean by bioluminescence? You guys take a guess. Because you've learned about what do we mean by luminescence or luminous objects in physics, especially in grade 6. And we know luminous objects are those which will emit their own light. So what is bioluminescence in that case? Very simple and easy. Break it down, right? So we have bio and luminescence, right? So when you split it, what would it mean? Bio means living, luminous means light. Very good. Yes, very good. I am so proud of all of you. So we know that when biological organisms are emitting and they produce their own light, we see that they are called as biolum. This phenomenon or this process that we see is what we call as bioluminescence. And these organisms are what we call as bio luminescent okay i'm going to use this interchangeably so do not get confused they're called as bioluminescent organisms are we clear so far everybody we're clear no very simple so far yes living right very good they are living yes all right wonderful now we are going to be looking at some more examples because you think only fireflies are the ones that will be able to do this yes all right we see that there are so many more living organisms which are considered to be bioluminescent. I am getting to it. No problem, no problem. All right. So for Lakshmi, once again, I'm going to tell you what is bioluminescence. Luminescent that is there is nothing but or luminous that is there. We see that luminous means that emit light, right? That means they absorb and they emit light. Now, on the other hand, bio means living. Which means when biological, bioluminescence is a phenomenon, when biological organisms or living organisms produce and emit their own light. Yes? All right. Now we're going to look at some more examples of these bioluminescent organisms. Now, mainly we see that they are marine. And I want you to take a minute and enjoy how beautiful it looks, right? Because when I saw this for the first time, it was amazing how they looked. Now, what you see right here is not, yes, jellyfishes are also bio, some jellyfishes are bioluminescent, but this is a type of algae, all right? So, this is a type of algae which we call as dinoflagellates, all right? So, it's a technical term and we find them in water and they give out this greenish, bluish light that is there. Yes, they look very pretty, right? And I'm sure some of you would have seen this as well. And in case if you've not seen it, towards the end, I'll tell you where all you can find these dinoflagellates as well. I know you are shocked. Yes, I was shocked too when I saw this for the first time. And as a fact, matter of fact, I have a small video here. So if you keep your hand outside, right? If you keep your hand out in the water, we see that, you know, it will look something like this. There's somebody keeping their hands there. And we have all the dinoflagellates that are there. Yes, I know. It's there in a movie as well. Very good. There you Very good. It looks wonderful at night especially. Now, there are some other kind of organisms also. So here if you see, I know the image may not be very clear because these organisms are found deep in the ocean. We call it as vampire squids, all right? So in case if you're not able to see it, I would recommend that you increase the brightness in your phone. You will be able to see this, okay? So we see that these are squids, basically like octopuses that are there. And at the tip of their tentacles, we see that they will be emitting the light that is there. All right, so this here again is another type that will be there. Now we have some more interesting examples. We have a hatchet fish, okay? So in a dinoflagellate, we saw that the whole organism is being very, you know, it is being bioluminescent and emitting light. In the case of the vampire squid, we saw that it was on the tips. Yes. And now if you look at the third, the fourth example that we have, which is a hatchet fish, right? We see that the bottom part of their body that I am highlighting. So if you see, this is a hatchet fish and this is the underneath view. So if the fish looks like this, we are seeing from here. Okay we see that it will look something like this. So different organisms that are there exhibit different types of bioluminescence, right? Yes, very good, very good. Let's keep focusing on the class, all right? Very good. Yes, Laksh, there are 70 types of algae that are there. All right. No problem, Anik. I also saw Harsimran was a little late. No problem, no problem at all. Now, we also have some starfishes which are bioluminescent. 
and one such example that is there is the brittle star right yes no problem deepak no problem at all we are just going and getting started with it so brittle star that is there is a type of starfish it is not an octopus it is a starfish and we see that at the ends of it we see that it will emit this light right all right now we saw that so many of them are underground under water right whether it was the hatchet fish the squid or whether it's the brittle star we see that most of them are under water but we also find some on land too like for example our fireflies were on land but we also have some fungi that is there right we see that there are some beautiful fungi which are bioluminescent and fungi i'm telling you are the most diverse kind of organisms that we find yes all right everybody so as you can see we've had a quick look at so many different kinds of examples that are there right yes so what we are going to do today is we are going to understand how they are able to emit light so so far we've understood what is bioluminescence which is nothing but a phenomenon by which living organisms emit light right we've looked at examples of the same and today what we are going to do now is to understand how they are able to emit light right two more things we will learn very simple how they are able to do it and why are they emitting light i mean it's not just to look pretty right there must be some reason as to why all these organisms are emitting light and these are questions that as biology students and as my students you should ask ma'am why is this happening why is that happening the question of why should be there right so it's very important that you understand this very good very good yes so very quickly everybody just an excitement level check are we excited for today to learn more about this right give me a thumbs up quick thumbs up in the chat and then i'll move to the next set of things yes very good deepak there are bacteria and fungi that are there yes very good all right very good very good why do they emit light yes that's a very interesting question and i'm going to be answering it in just a bit but before that i'll tell you how they emit light okay okay very good so like i could see that a lot of you are telling me right mom this is happening because of a chemical reaction very good right this happens because of a chemical reaction and because it's taking place inside a living organism we call it as a biochemical reaction yes very good very good i missed one question in between i could see that the question was coming up so i will finish this explanation and then i will take the question up all right very good so brittle star is a common term there are various species of brittle stars as well and that's great shruanshu shruanshu that you have a brittle star in your aquarium yes so let's understand how they are able to glow now this is again another other very interesting thing and i will suggest that you spend 2 minutes just listening to me otherwise you might get confused there are so many new words you will learn about it's also not part of your syllabus so maybe you might get a little confused but don't worry give me 2 minutes i'll make it as simple as i can right now when we talk about bioluminescence the reason why they are able to emit light is because they have a certain substance in their body known as luciferin and lucifer comes from a latin word which means light bearer so the latin word lucifer means light bearer which is why the this particular substance is given as the name is given as luciferin now what happens is that this luciferin will react with oxygen that is there in the surrounding right and what hap this oxygen and luciferin will react in the presence of a chemical known as luciferase very very important luciferase is what is important that you understand now when this luciferase will act and it will you know act as a catalyst mainly or basically like something which will tell okay do it faster do it faster do it this way it's like something that will control the chemical reaction and as a result we see that it will form something known as oxy luciferin and we see that this luciferin molecules that are there they are all chemical substances right they'll all get rearranged in some other you know different kind of pattern and as a result they will emit the light energy right so it's important that you understand how this happens and we often call this as the luciferin luciferase reaction are we clear everybody yes o2 means oxygen are we clear 
Very simple thing. All you need to know there is something known as luciferin. Luciferase is acting on it, right? And they are able to do this. They have a specially designed organ. I will not say designed organ, but they have specialized cells where this reaction will take place, right? And when light energy is emitted, we are able to, of course, visualize it. Now, this is a very interesting, this is a very newly developed thing that I want to tell all of you. Now, of course, main, a lot of organisms have this luciferin and they are, you know, we have luciferase also. But there are some organisms in water which does not produce luciferase, okay? So they don't produce luciferase. And I told you this is very important for light and all to be emitted. Then how are these organisms able to explain it or how are they able to emit light? Now, apart from luciferase, there's also another kind of protein which certain organisms produce, which we call as photoproteins. And this discovery of photoproteins was very new, right? So they discovered it in some crystal jellies that are there or jelly, you know, crystal jellies or crystal jellyfishes that are there. And what happens is that in these photoproteins, they don't need luciferase enzyme. Directly, they will react with your luciferin, Okay, and we need some calcium ions here instead and instead and of course after that we see that it will emit light energy. Do microorganisms produce this? Some microorganisms, we call them as hydrozoids. Some of them have the ability to produce it. Yes, yeah, so this is very recent, a lot of discovery, a lot of research is going into photoproteins, right? Jellyfishes never die, that's actually because of their life cycle. Okay, all right. Are we clear, everybody? So I'll quickly repeat this once again because, of course, this is a very tricky part of today's class, okay? See, we have a substance known as luciferin, all right? Now, this luciferin, when it will react with oxygen in the presence of luciferase, it will give us something known as oxyluciferin. And as a result of the rearrangement of the molecules of luciferin, we see that it will emit light energy. Now, not all organisms have luciferase enzyme. In some cases, we see that they have something known as photoproteins. And we see that photoproteins will react with calcium ions in the absence, or we see that along with your luciferin to give us light energy. Yes, all right. So, are we clear with how they're able to emit light? Now, I'll tell you another fun fact also. Now, how many of you have tried this? When you have a torch light, okay, and you keep your hand in front of the torch light, after some time our hand feels little hot, right? Yes, it feels a little hot. How many of you have felt this? When you keep it for a long period of time, or even if you keep your hand near a candle that is there, it, you feel hot, right? So that's some heat energy also that comes along with it, okay? That's something that we feel. Yes, no, not little bit. Little bit comes, I agree. Now, when you think about or when you think about the energy or the light that is coming out of these organisms, no, we call it as cold light because the amount of thermal energy that comes out from it, right, is only 20%. So it's cold light, which means if you go and as you know, you put your hand inside a jar full of jelly, I mean, um, fireflies, if you want to feel adventurous and you keep it inside, you see that you will not feel a lot of heat when compared to when you keep it in front of a torch light. So that's very interesting, right? Yes, LED bulbs are warm. So read, this is for everybody, 6 to 8 grade that is there. It's for everybody, we're doing science 101. Yes, what kind of light energy? That's a very deep physics question, I would say. You can ask Saurabh sir about the different types of light energy, but from what I understand, light energy is only light energy, right? So we see that, you know, it emits light basically. Cold light, yes, very good, very good. So now we know how this is happening. I mean, or how this is happening. Now let's go to the why. Why are these organisms emitting light, right? Why are we doing this? What is the whole point of it? Can't they just be like every other living organisms? I mean, we, we are not bioluminescent and we are going by just fine. So what is the reason behind it? Now for different organisms, there are different reasons, okay? So first and foremost, like how all of you told me, right? It is for protection, yes? So in the case of your vampire squids that we saw earlier, right? We see that the vampire squid, especially squids, what they do is they inject a lot of ink into the water. Or if there is somebody coming to attack or they want to prey on somebody, they'll inject ink. 
what these vampire squids will do, right? We see that these squids will em emit like a bioluminescent mucus, like a very slimy mucus that goes out. And it is to protect itself. So if a predator is coming, it will eject out a bioluminescent mucus that will be brightly colored to distract the predator and then it will run away and escape. So it's very smart like that. It will just escape in that manner. Similarly, even your hatchet fish that was there, right? Your hatchet fish that we saw earlier. This hatchet fish is so smart. I'm telling you, very, very smart. Now we saw that unlike most organisms, it has this bottom part which is emitting bioluminescence, right? Yes. So how are they able to do this? Now I saw a question which says, ma'am, it's for their own protection. It is for their own protection. This is all for their own protection. Now what happens is that in the seas and oceans, some of you were telling me about sharks, right? So we have sharks and we know that these sharks are predators and they want to just go and feed on other fishes. Now what happens or what these sharks do, no, they're very smart, okay? And I want you to listen to this. This is very interesting. So what happens is that all the other fishes will be nicely floating on top like this, all right? Oops, the fin went upside down. So they'll all be floating upside down. I mean, they'll all be swimming uh, maybe on a higher level than the sharks. The sharks will be deep in the ocean. And what they do is, as they swim around, they'll try to figure out if they have food to eat. Now, when it's looking from down to above, we see that there will be shadows which will be cast, right? When light comes, the shadow will be there. And if a shadow is there, it'll be like, oh, food is there, I'll go attack. So it'll go and it'll start an attack and eat this. But what this hatchet fish did, very smart. You know, oh, shark will do this, so I'm going to be very smart about it. When it has the light from underneath, right? A shadow will not be formed per se because light is now falling. Which means that this will adjust the light in such a way that it will go undetected by the shark. It will just look like a very bright thing which is floating on top, right? So when I read about this, I was so amazed by how smart the hatchet fish is. Yes? Yes, I can see Deepak is asking me some doubts. Please do ask me your doubts. Yes? Do biolumin dolphins? No, not really. No. Okay. All right, everybody. Are we clear so far? Very quickly. Those of you who have doubts, please do ask me. Yes, very good. Very good. For those of you who are asking me about menti, I just want all of you to give me five minutes. Towards the end of the class, I will tell you. Yes, smart fishes. Fishes are also very smart. Very good. Yes, please tell me. For those of you who have doubts, I want you to ask me. For Simran, who's asking me, ma'am, how was curd first formed? It's a little away from what we are discussing. But you can, if you have this doubt, you can put it in the comment section. I'll answer it. Okay? Yes, Amrita, please tell me what is your doubt. Do it, does it attract food? I will tell you in just a food, just a bit. Is there fission or fusion reaction present? It's not a fission or fusion, but more likely it is a kind of rearrangement that we observe. All right. Okay, Amrita, please tell me. Sanju also has a doubt. Okay, do they attack their prey? They do not attack the prey. They escape, right? So there are some animals which used to escape. There are some animals which will use to attack and we will see those that are going to attack. I am not ignoring all of you. I'm just asking you for your doubts. I'm missing out on the doubts. I think the chat is moving very fast. No, Sanju, they do not. For those of you who still have doubts, I knew Amrita had a doubt, Aisha had a doubt, Laksh, no, they will not. So there are other fishes which attract food, okay? I have answered your question, Sanju, yes. All clear? Okay, very good, very good. Transfer of heat, Saurabh sir is there, he will answer. He will answer all your doubts that are there. Yes, okay. So Amrita, in the meanwhile, when you ask, right, I will just make sure that I'll go to the next bit of it and quickly go through that as well. All right. Okay. So just give me five minutes. I'm going to tell you about two more fishes. Now, next up, a lot of you are like, ma'am, will they attack, right? Are they going to also attack? Now, what we saw so far in the case of hatchet fish and the other one, which was the vampire squid, that is for protection. Okay. But in this case, there are other organisms which use it for attack. And what you see on your screen is a very scary but a 
an organism that we definitely find which is the angler fish all right so angler fish as you can see if all of you have watched finding nemo movie you would have observed this angler fish that is there yes it looks very dangerous and it is okay we find it in the deep bottom of the oceans that are there now they have very sharp teeth and we see that there's a part of their body which will project it will form something known as a filament and it will end in a bulb like structure like this and this particular part is actually acting like a bulb so this is the only place which emits the light and they use this to detect and find their prey so these guys are also very smart okay because now they have to hunt people down no they need to feed on the other fishes that are there the poor fishes that are there so what they will do is they will minimize the light okay and they will they, they will still be able to move around and as they come closer to the prey they the light will move you know the light will shine or it will emit the light and then it will feed on it yes do they attack yes they do attack so function is for attack you can read yes so jadav i think that you're getting confused do not worry wherever you are getting confused you can just rewind the video and you can watch that part i am telling you you will be able to understand don't worry okay yes now apart from this we also have another kind which is there which is called as the loose jaw fish okay we call them as the loose jaw fish and they are also very smart so this is also for attacking animals and feeding on it so this is also under water okay so what they will do is they will emit a red color light all right so or it will be lu red luminescence basically and what happens is that most fishes which are there under water they are able to detect blue color but red is almost like blinding to them so what they'll do they'll nicely emit this red color where the other fishes will not be able to see what is ahead but the loose jaw fish can and it will use this to go and attack the prey right yes yeah, so there are some very very scary ones that are there right so yes they are there but it's important as biology students that we know all about this yes very good so now of course we learnt about this and this is an article about a particular beach in india so there's a place known as the padukere beach right and we observed this especially it is in karnataka only okay and there were glowing waves that are there so the dinoflagellates that are there that we looked at they exhibit this kind of bioluminescence and we find it in india also and these dinoflagellates they can detect changes in the environment so sometimes they show this luminescence when there's less salinity or when there's not enough salt in water or maybe due to some other changes they will be able to detect it and of course in the case of fireflies and fungi that we saw it is to attract their partner so for reproduction and to attract their mate we see that fireflies have the glow and in the case of fungi that is there right they need to attract insects so to spread their uh, you know spores to different parts of the you know the what do you say the surroundings so that they can grow and easily reproduce we see that they have these bioluminescence yes so now i'm going to take a minute to take some doubts because i can see that a lot of you are asking me about it please ask me what your doubts are yes alina has a science exam tomorrow all the best they have current so they don't have electric current per se they're just emitting the light that is there yes yes uh, uh, amrita i did right yes okay all right so amrita i did see your question you can just paste that question once again I'm very sorry Aradhya I do understand that you are in grade 5 that is there so you can take your time go back watch this video and you will be able to understand no problem at all yes okay yes please tell me please tell me Amrita whatever doubts are there you can ask me right 3.3 feet is the length of the angler fish right I am not sure of the length per se you can check it out for sure how do mushroom like structures eat food So what they do is they secrete a certain substance and they break the food outside their body and then they absorb it. How is light generated? Light is generated of course wherein we see that you know I like I told you there is luciferin there are photoproteins they are all responsible for you know generating that light. What is a catalytic converter? catalytic that is there is catal i mean i'm assuming it's from physics that is there i mean in um, biology like a catalyst so what they do is they increase the rate of a reaction 
All right. Can you give some examples? I gave examples right in the beginning. You can go back and check it out. And before I wind up, do jaw fishes. Jaw fishes attack. Um, I'm not very sure. Uh, Amrita, I'll check it out and get back to you. Okay. How, please ask Kushbu ma'am about doubts in maths, right? So Kushbu, when Kushbu ma'am comes live, you can definitely be there and you will be able to ask her your doubts. So very quickly before I wind up today's class that is there, there are some places in India itself where we can witness this bioluminescence. So apart from the fireflies that you told me that you find outside your house or in the villages, we can go to some beaches as well and see these dinoflagellates that are there. So very quickly before I wind up, here's a quick question for all of you and this is a homework. Why are we only seeing green color or blue color light emitted? So far apart from the loose jaw fish, we only saw that most of it is green or blue. So what is the reason behind it? I want you to go read up a little and then let me know in the comment section. All right. And I'm going to be checking your answers. And everybody, I hope that, you know, you will all be coming today at, at 7 p.m. And it is going to be a mentee quiz. So you can tell your friends also to come for that session at 7 p.m. So we are having it at 7. No mentee quiz right now. Okay. All right, everybody. I will post the simple. I will post the answer right away. Very good. Very good. And of course, for those of you who loved what we showed, I will be sharing the session PDF on Telegram. And you know that we're a small little community and we give you so much on Telegram. We put updates there, session PDFs, homework questions, so much more, right? And like I always tell you, we've got you covered no matter what. So all you need to do is to hit that like button, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, even though understanding about fireflies and luminescence is not part of your syllabus, as science students, I always tell you, right? You should be curious about what is happening around you. As biology students, we should be curious. Yes? Uh, so did you enjoy today's class? Because I'm going to be coming up with a lot of interesting topics for all of you. It may seem like it's not part of your syllabus, but I'm telling you, you will enjoy it. Yes? Very good, everybody. Very good. So if you enjoyed the class also, I want you to tell me in the comment section because you know that that's where I always look for all of your comments and suggestions, right? And if you have some topic that you are always curious about learning about, I want you to tell me in the comment section. Is it Menti at 7 p.m.? Yes, it is. All right. Okay, everybody. So with this, I'll be signing off. I will be seeing you very soon again. Bye-bye and have a nice day.